everyone, and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review, mateys. And today's game is is a pirate game. Yep. The game is called Sea of Nadia. It's by Alex McClay, McClay's Games. It plays two to four players. Takes about 45 to 60 minutes for ages, I don't know, probably eight or nine and up, I think. Uh, 12 and up. Eh, probably. I think you probably go younger. <laughs> the game's simple enough to where I think you could do it. If you have a really smart nine-year-old. <laughs> Which I'm sure everyone would claim they have a, a yeah. smart nine-year-old, yeah. so. So. <laughs> You can, you can do that. All right, let's talk about the game. This is a pirate game in which players are going to be selecting a pirate and they're going to be selecting a ship. They're going to be getting a special card that is going to give them special abilities, which is their captain card. And they're going to go around trying to collect buried treasure. Yeah, you need to get some resources first to help you find that treasure, like maps and uh, shovels, that sort of thing. So you'll go around specifically <laughs> to different <laughs> islands, utilizing your ship and actions, and you will select those resources, gathering them until the point where you see a treasure chest, and if you have those resources, you can use actions to gather treasure chests. There's seven or eight different actions in the game, things like move or pick up treasure, put down treasure, uh, collect the treasure chests, you have special actions on your character boards that will allow you to mess with your opponents or help you in some way. There's a shop that's open that you can spend treasure to collect cards, and those cards will give you a benefit of some type that you can use as a free action. And then the most interesting aspect of the game, in my opinion, is rolling the die at the beginning of the game and assigning those die to each player, and those die that you assign will determine how many actions each player gets based on what is rolled. Plus a possible special action. Or negative yeah. action. Or negative. <laughs> and basically the idea is the game is going to continue until somebody collects seven or eight treasures depending on the number of players or if there's only three treasures left on the board in which case the game will instantly end and they'll count up your gold coins there's also some other ways to gain some bonus points like rats if you gather the right cards or if you gather things like bottles or other unique cards that will provide some type of bonus for having specific types of chests and whatnot tally the coins up Whoever has the most money is the winner. We'll take it down below. I'll show you the basic aspects of the game, which we basically already talked about almost yeah, all of it for the most part. Pretty much how to play, yeah, right there. So <laughs> down below we will go, and I will show you the game Seas of Nadia. I only have one accent, and medieval and pirates are the same. Sea of Nadia. Yeah, yeah. Here we have Sea of Nadia, and all of the components included for the game, or at least as far as the prototype is concerned, we have, let's go ahead and talk about the different things in the game here. We have the pirates here, or your captains. We're also going to be having our main player reference boards here, which are going to be telling us what different actions you can take in the game, as well as what treasures you need to open the chests. Yeah, what resources you need to unlock those chests. As well as, we have to have a shop deck. This is the shop deck here. It's going to come with three cards. You'll flip over from the top of the deck here. Whenever somebody buys a card, you refill the, the deck, and so on and so forth. But to start off with, just go ahead and shuffle the deck and put out three. This is the board set up for four players, which you're basically utilizing all the treasures and all of the chests. In which case, all you're doing is having players go back and forth, placing down the chests in a random order on the X's on the board. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and place these treasures down on the board uh, in any random location allocation as well back and forth so everyone gets a chance you're also going to then place your boats on the board these are the boats you'll be starting with in the game and you can place them anywhere on the board randomly as well and shuffle up these little bottles here deal out the first player or admiral marker to somebody and give all the rest of the players in torn order the two three and four player little bottle icons from there you'll be then taking die and there's four die here and you're gonna be using one per player in the game if you're playing just two players you use two die three you use three four you use four. The same will be said for player boards, boats, and the captains. The last thing you need to do is you're going to have these little uh, these little chips here, and yep. based on what ones you want to play with, or if you want to do it randomly, you put one in each of the corners for each of the different colors: blue, green, yellow, and purple. And, and then those, those match up to the die rolls, so that will tell you what those die rolls mean. Yep. Yeah. And that's basically how you set up the game. Yep. And from there, you're pretty much ready to go. The game comes with all the components you see here, the rule book, and the box, and maybe some other Kickstarter exclusives if they do run that or not. And this is a prototype copy, so, so yeah. it could change a little bit. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you how to play around or solve the game, what actions you can take. We'll come up and then do our review, and then you can decide if you want to pick up the game Sea of Nadia. The first player is going to take up the dice, depending on the number of players. So four players do four dice and roll them. Then 
they get to choose and assign the dice to each player, including themselves. So choosing what you want to do. The dice each have a number on them. That's the number of actions that player will be able to take this turn, as well as an indicator of a certain extra ability or action, depending on what you have set up on the board in the four corners. So the wheel um, plus two actions if your ship is empty. Here we have someone will get the skull, which is a bad one. Uh, it takes two actions to do certain things and so on and so forth. And then that first player who rolled will also get to take their actions first. Uh, choosing from a bunch of different actions. Moving the ship is one action. And you can move it yeah. any way you want as long as it's one space. Up, down, left, or right. Yep. Collecting resources. So you can collect resources from spaces that are adjacent to your ship. Placing them onto your ship. And if there are multiple resources in a location, you have to pull from the top first. You can in only addition, ever have three resources, yep. too. Four resources. Three right? resources on top of any treasure chest oh, yes. and four in your ship. Four yeah. on your ship. Uh, then you could, But you could also, if you don't need it, you could unload the resource if you're just using it to get to a certain other resource. You could also open a chest. So if you have the required resources, which are on your, your player reference card here, what resources you'll need, you can unlock that chest as an action. So for instance, if I have these four treasures here, which is the max amount on my boat, I can use one action to move here um, and one more action to move here. And then from there, I can then use an action to take this treasure chest. And from there, I would actually take my resources off of my ship and place them on any non-adjacent space on the board that I so choose. Following the limitations of that you can only place three max in any specific area, taking that treasure and placing it next to my player board. Yep, that's called redistributing the resources. And you can be a little strategic there as well. You could also use your resources on your ship to buy one of the cards from the shop. The cost is at the top of the card uh, there. You get they're the ones with all the different colors on them are wild. And they'll give you something that you can either use right away or in a future turn. Or something that's going to help you with the end game scoring. Such as here, this will let you... Get two points for, for each, each rat. Of the rat you have. Each rat you have. <laughs> Which some of the chests will have rats in addition to or instead of gold. Especially these, these lower, usually the... The wood chest. They're hidden somewhere. Yeah, we okay. Here's a rat. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Only just a rat too. Um, Another action you can take is mm -hmm. you can remove all the cards from the market, put them in the discard, and then put three more action cards out. Yep. So you use all of your actions, and it goes to the second player's turn. They're going to use all of their action, in addition to if there's a special ability on their on the dice to use one of the for special ad abilities there. And you'll just keep going in the game, moving around the board, gathering resources, using these resources and reallocating them to pick up chests, mm -hmm. and then putting those chests in front of you until the point in which there's only three chests left in the game, or if somebody has seven or eight diff uh, chests individually, in a two-player game, it's eight, and in a three- or higher-player game, it's seven, and the game will end. You'll go ahead and flip over all of your chests, you'll add up all of your points, as well as any of the cards you've gathered that are going to score you victory points, and the person with the most coins... Wins. That's right. Pretty simple. Let's come up and discuss it. Yep. Sea of Nadia. This is a family game. This is a game that would work with kids, it would work with younger kids as well, and the game is very straightforward and simple as to how you take your turns. The action die are nice because for the most part, you're going to be getting three, four, maybe five actions on your turn, and it's going to be based on how you distribute the die. If you successfully, you know, have a little bit of tableau management, you can acquire more actions, or depending on the different action tile, you'll be able to acquire more actions without having your ship empty, or depending on the different players' special abilities here. So like this guy here, he's cost one ability and he can turn a fortune card 90 degrees instead of discarding it. So you can apply its effect more than once. Most of these fortune cards are one use abilities like this one here. And that guy will allow you to spend an action to do this twice. That's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> uh, you're basically moving around your ships, gathering resources, pick up delivery with a little bit of take that, a little bit of tableau management. Uh, very, very straightforward. It has a puzzle aspect to it as well because you, as you're replenishing the resources back on the board, you can put them farther away from someone you know who needs that 
color resource or put it on your next path where you want to go next. So and yeah, you have the ability, like, you can see <laughs> what players are trying to go for and based on that you can place the resources away from those players and closer to you. And or, they're limited yeah, resources. For the sure. resources are definitely, definitely yeah. limited based on the number of players in the game. So I didn't explain that in two and three players there's a different setup, but you can look in the rules, you'll figure it out, it's very simple. I think it's like, remove one of each treasure for a two player, th two of each for a two player, three of each, or one of each for a three player, and then keep them all for a four player. But regardless, uh, you'll, you'll get it really quick. Uh, this game is one I can easily see a family sitting down and playing mm -hmm. multiple mm -hmm. times, going around, collecting things. There, it's not extremely deep, but it's also not, not strategic. You do have to make st specific strategic choices in the game mm -hmm. that will play better than others. But if you play with a bunch of kids, that's yeah, still fine. It still works. Yeah, you don't have to be super strategic. You can just kind of play to have fun. You're being a pirate ship, collecting resources, finding the treasure. <laughs> the game is very likely to end very, very closely. Yeah. And, at some, and sometimes it might come down to a little bit of luck as to what type of treasure chest mm -hmm. you gathered. Mm -hmm. But you kind of assign that luck based on the type of unique cards you can put in front of you, because you can only have three of them, as well as what types of treasure chests you get. If you get the bronze treasure chests, they're going to be worth the least one coin or even just one rat. Uh, the iron are two or three generally. And then you got two. the big one here, which could be Gold three to is, five. Yeah, so, so it's always three at least. Oh, of course it costs more and requires yeah, a different combination of treasures. Sure. So you have to be aware of what you're using and when you utilize them. There's also treasures that will stay in place that will give your ability specific bonuses. Let's see if I can find one really quick There's that one I think is pretty useful. Upgrades. That let you use a certain color resource as a wild. Yep. That's nice. Here's yellow talisman. You can make, use any yellow as a type of any resource, which is Great. actually really good. And especially if you get it early, early in the game. Uh, what was actually pretty cool too is these little these little uh, bottles here. <laughs> Basically, you roll the die, and if you roll a bottle, you're gonna give a bottle to either yourself or another player based on the roll like that you the give bottles. it to. You'll pull these guys out, and they might give you an extra action. Uh, they might give you something like a coin, which is a victory point, mm -hmm. or even a little rat, which can be two or nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it has just a little bit of extra pizzazz in the game. Yeah, and I got you one have that to was a wild resource. That was great. <laughs> and you have to determine like, is it worth giving this die? which has three actions and and, and 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 one of those bottles which could be nothing to you know something very useful yeah. and then giving yourself those four actions or maybe even five and you have to kind of determine there's a little bit of push your luck i would say in the game as well as to like mm -hmm. how much do you want to to try and gather which types of resources yeah and it cost me at least the tie in the first game that we played because I moved my ship and gathered the bronze treasure chests because I knew that I could get two treasure chests on the next turn if I did that. But she ended the game on her <laughs> next <laughs> turn and thus I did not get a chance to gather those chests mm -hmm. because the game ends instantly when either of the two conditions are met. So that's kind of cool. The fact that there's multiple little chips here that For provide replayability, replayability yeah. changes the game based mm -hmm. on the die rolls and the, and the allocations. character abilities, especially playing two player, you could play a lot of different uh, character combinations. And then as well, just uh, there's a lot of strategy in how you choose who gets what action die and how many actions or bonus actions they're going to get. And also what types of chests you want to go after or if you want to go for more cards than chests. And, just know that you're gonna have less chest overall, but you might get more more bonus points. So there's a lot of choice in that, which is great. Yeah, it's it's very simple as far as how to play. It's yeah, very it's easy to teach, choice. very <laughs> easy to just jump in. After about four, maybe even three actions, you've got the game down. Yeah. I wouldn't even say a full turn because you know what you need to do and how to gather the resources. If you like games that are a little more on the lighter side, games that involve a little bit of pickup delivery and even a little bit of like aggressive play, it's not really in the game a so, lot some of the abilities but you don't you can choose to use them or not so and if you like the it's more of a vibrant style uh sailing type of a game artwork <laughs> i think you'll like that i think yeah. the boats are really cool and they're nice and easy to use and they allow you to place the resources on them just fine mm -hmm. and everything works out just perfectly the game does and i like to say this when it's when it when it actually works but it does what it intends to do it's, it's trying to make a light-hearted pickup delivery game featuring captains of ships, pirates, and 
uh, I guess like, like a Caribbean, I suppose, or, or like some type of oasis area. <laughs> oasis. Tropical That'd be really island. crazy to have a bunch tropical of tropical a area. tropical yeah. island area. Yeah. <laughs> and it felt nice. It felt it felt good to play. It's a game I would easily pick up and play again. It's not something I would specifically go. I want to play that game straight up. Like this is the game for this specific scenario. But if anybody asked me to play it, I would be like, yeah, easily, yeah, no we'll problem. Play. We can break it out pretty easily with family members. And it's super easy to put together and put mm -hmm. up as well, which is super nice as well. I don't really have any specific negatives other than I think people who don't like this type of light pickup delivery style game probably won't be interested in it. Yeah, if you're looking for something a little meatier, maybe it's not for you, but um, for family friendly fun, it'll be great. Also, I'm 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 hoping these will turn out really good, but we'll see. Because this is a 3D printed, which is pretty cool. The ships are pretty cool. I'll, I'll be excited to see what they do with the final production of these. And the last thing is redistribution. That's a really cool mechanic that I haven't actually seen used because you can allocate them where you want. And I don't know how mean it can be. I suppose it could be extremely mean. Yeah. Um, if you know they need that one white piece for the for the last gold chest. You can stack all, all or you can stack all, all three white map. pieces all the way across the map when you see your opponents <laughs> gathering specific types. But to me, that's just a little bit of fun. But I can see how people can be like, ah, you, mm -mm, no way, no way. But overall, uh, Sea of Nadia, a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. And if you're interested as well, you can go ahead and check out down below link in the description kickstarter campaign for the sailing pickup delivery uh vibrant beauty that is sea of nadia mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to sailing the sea of nadia with you next, next time. time that was ah! you stole it from me <laughs> whatever <laughs>